Welcome into SEC softball on this Friday night in Lexington. Boy, do the hitters love to see those flags blowing out. And this is the first of three in a crucial weekend series as the Georgia Bulldogs come to town to take on the Kentucky Wildcats. And that ball is bunted back to Schoonover Fields. It nicely, but I believe her foot got pulled off the bag. She had to go up top a little bit to field that ball. Early outs being able to work ahead in the count. And there's the first strikeout of the game for out number one. Yeah, that's a big out, and especially for Davis. She's someone. And that ball got away from the catcher, Hamilton. Advances into scoring position with a full count to Mosley. Got her on the inside corner. Both. And you're deep in the count, so a lot of trust there from Kearney. And she walked her. So now two on with two out. For her. Got her on the fists. Caught in foul ground by Lorsing. Well, she'll have a chance to earn an RBI, so anytime you can do that. And there you go. Yep. Lead off single right through the right side on an 0-2 pitch. Check the handy notes here from Chris Scholes and one two pitch down in the dirt, and that's gonna allow Smith to take off and go, and that'll be Point line drive. They just avoided the double play. Koffel hit it on a button, but she hit it right at the first baseman, Digby. That ball's going toward the gap in left center. No, it'll get there. Smith held up, but she'll score easily from second. Ebbs chugs into second with an RBI double, and the Cats take a 1 0 first inning lead. Turning that call, you can see Ebbs just hits this ball where it's pitched, drives the gap. No doubt stand up double, easy RBI. And she walked her on four straight pitches, and then the ball was bobbled. That'll be a pass ball on Davis. Hunter Emery Donaldson now down at third. And there's a shot through the right side. Donaldson scores with a second run of the inning. Plots with the RBI single. Borzaleri goes into second. And the Wildcats are on top, two to nothing. And really, you go back through this inning and the piece by piece of how they put it together, and this is a prime example. You can see Plots, she's lost her lower half completely, being able to stay on this plane with her bat and drive that ball right through the gap. Doesn't have to be exceptional, but she gets the job done. First and the only out, that sharp line out by Koffel. Throw back to second and they got her. That was a big time throw right there. Second run. And then Borzaleri got picked off at second, and that's on the corner. And the inning comes to an end. But not before the Cats get two runs on three hits, no errors. They leave one on base. And, and I believe that hit her. I think you are right. So Schoonover immediately gets a two run lead. There you see her shaking that left hand. Ball hit her. So this is what we've been talking about with Schoonover. You get. Lifted to right field. Plots is underneath it. Chambly's going to tag it second. Throw is over. The cutoff attempt by Kopp Koffel, but good backup there. Put a run on the board. Not able to capitalize on that one. Let's see if they try again. That ball is lifted to left. 
Chambly's going to tag it third. However, it wasn't deep enough. And an alert play out there by Riley Smith. Who Stayed upstairs. They faked the throw to second. That's a good play. They get two in scoring position, but Goodwin gets the start. Koffel's got it, across the diamond, and the Cats get out of the inning. Georgia gets no runs, no hits. They leave a couple. Pope is a guy that loves this university. First pitch swinging and hitting. It dug out one of that one. That's a shot, and that's going to be a base hit. Extra bases. She's going to go to second, stand yep. up with a double, and what perfect placement by Tobias as she shot it past the pulled in third baseman. Here's the Wildcats number nine hitter, Jenna Blanton, who puts down a perfect bunt, and Walters slips in front of the mound. I hope she didn't hurt herself, and now Blanton is going to get herself in a rundown between first and second. Yeah. For that resume. Smith faked a bunt, and Blanton. Goes into second with a stolen base. Dangerous Aaron Koffel awaits on deck. That ball to second. That's going to score. Tobias from third. They get Smith at first, but she does her job. Getting in the Wildcats third run, and it's three to nothing. Pressure, you know, on the on deck circle, and assuming that we're going to see the return of Ebbs. But then especially after she smoked that ball in the first inning against Georgia State the other night in a midweek game where they were heavily favored. And he said, sometimes you've just got to let somebody pitch their way out of problems. That ball is smoked to right center and gone. Taylor Ebbs with a three run shot. And it's six to nothing. Oh, that feels so good when the person in front of you is intentionally walked to get to you and you're able to deliver. And you can see Ebbs on this pitch. She sees it, she sits on it and absolutely obliterates it. Look at that rotation coming from her backside. Hits this ball so hard. Talked about the park, talked about the wind. That would have gotten out of a lot of different places. Two outs. And that's a good off-speed pitch and she got her. But not before the Cats get four runs on two hits. Of pitches, especially marginal pitches. Doesn't mean you have to pipe it, but walks aren't surprising for her. And she heads down to piece, right? There's such a difference between one and two inches. And that ball gets away from Hamilton. Two and two. Got her swinging. And again, scoon over. Here comes the two two again. And she hit her. So now Schoonover has walked three and hit three batters in two and a third innings. There's a, a swing and miss factor working in her favor also. Got her swinging. So threes are wild. Three strikeouts, three walks, three hit batsmen for Davis at third, Kearney at second, Kuma at first, two outs. And that ball is hit into left field. That's a base hit. Riley Smith gets over there and cuts it off quickly, but not in time to prevent Davis from scoring from third, Kearney scoring from second, and the Wildcat lead is cut to 6-2. So much, this ball is not a bad pitch. You can see it is up and tailing away from the strike zone. Good one, though, able to get that bat out there and drive the pitch for the RBIs. So two big. Yeah. 
So Goodwin with that double down the left field line. And Digby lifts one to deep left center. It's in play. And that's the inning. But not before the dogs get a couple of runs on a hit. Solid, Joanna. She has, and, and being able to you know, have a first year with that kind of campaign is great. And continues to find a way on base. Boy, that is a shot off the glove of the third baseman, Mosley. That'll be a base hit. That would have been extra bases, though, between Georgia and Kentucky in all of the offensive numbers. That's a nice bunt by Hamilton. That'll get the job done. Sacrifice goes from Digby to Kuma. Got over the off speed pitch, and it was a pretty one. That's what's so difficult. Well, we've seen so far this year. She's very intentional. So having time in the dugout, watching what's happening before her, see if she can execute her plan here. Popped it up to the infield, and that'll do it. Cats strand a couple of runners. They don't get anything, but when we come right back, we'll. That ball shot to center field and caught. That is Delaney Sullivan who came in to pinch run and stayed in there defensively. His chest with those decisions. What a grab down there by Lorsen. I thought that ball was going to get by her. Not only did she make the grab, and here's Lindy Ray Davis, who walked last inning and scored, and that was a check swing that just about made it out to the track in one of the quickest half innings we've seen in a while. We'll hear from Rachel Lawson. Three for eight with runners in scoring position is huge. You know, right now, Georgia's only one for nine. So majorly the difference in this game, Kentucky's been able to make things happen. Wow, like that. You can clinic that all day. You cannot. Smith runs. They didn't get the tag. It looked like they might have gotten her on the hip as she went by, but we tell nobody's asked for a review. I'm pretty sure that if there would have been a tag, we'd have seen every student athlete on that field putting their hands on their ears. So looks clean. Koffel, short fly to left, and that's hauled in by Goodwin. Two pitch jammed her up over to the left side. Mosley in foul territory. Hard shot to third. Mosley's got it. And the dogs get out of the inning. They come to hit in the fifth. So oh, hard about facing Schoonover is that she gives you different looks. Got that one barreled up, but Reasoner is there. And there's one away. Game series. No question. And that 2 2 pitch, a slow roller down to Larson. You have to be able to get over things quickly. You have to be able to have a very short term mm -hmm. goldfish memory because the, the ball will find you and it and it will make an example of you. It finds Koffel. And after some early struggles, two really quick innings. Ball in for a called strike on the full count. And like I said, she has just you know, singled in the third. And that is behind the plate. Third baseman Mosley calls off her catcher. And it was a good thing. That, you know, we're chuckling a little bit, but that is that. A little bit of a waiting game when you can you have someone like a koala in front of you, and she's she's really done a great job. That hit her. So I'm going to say between the two teams, I believe that's the fifth hit. And that ball hit sharply to left, but perfectly positioned. Is good one. And there's a base hit to left. 
Might it be two. She takes the turn. Ball not fielded cleanly by Nesby. So that'll be a stand up double. Side to Jaden Goodwin, who's been hit by a pitch and doubled. And that ball has popped straight up. The pitcher, that's a good call there as Schoonover was coming in instead of having Hamilton going out. And that ball stayed downstairs. And so Georgia now with two on. She's 0 for 2, but the Cats playing in at the corners and regular depth in the middle of the infield. And that ball got away from Hamilton. And so they advanced the runners without even having to sacrifice. Yeah, we saw Armistead show the short three different speeds from her tonight. Left that one upstairs and on the 120th pitch of the night with one out here in the sixth. Tony Baldwin is in. Chambly at third, Digby at second, Armstead at first. And she got her on the 3-2 pitch swinging. Fifth. Back up the middle, tough play and that's a base hit. Chambly scores from third. Digby scores from second. But they get the runner out at second. And there's a strikeout. Yeah, Backus has done a great job. Hot shot to the shortstop, and Armstead handled it nicely. And quickly, there are two away. Give her anything that she really likes. Like that? Wow. Are you kidding me? That ball is over top of the scoreboard. That is one of the longest balls I've ever seen hit at John Crop Stadium. A solo shot and an insurance run for the Cats as they go up seven to four. And Kentucky's all-time leading home run hitter gets her 12th of the season. Doesn't seem like a huge number, but she has so few pitches to actually hit, and that's outstanding. She sees this pitch from the get and just delivers on a swing. Look at this over the scoreboard. <laughs> I know it. I know it. Way over the scoreboard. Yeah, I don't know what house that is back there, but I mean, the, the ball is now in there. You go. I still think that's what the message was. It just may have got team around the country, and that's why. And there's a base hit back up the middle. Boy, what a night for Ed. She's now three for four with arm on her right shoulder. And that ball is lifted to right. And the inning is over. But not before. The Cats all-time leading home run hitter, Aaron. That ball is hit a mile high. Lorsing settles under it. Here now, the 2-2 pitch. Right back at Schoonover. And I don't think she saw that she had that one. Nope. That's a look what I found moment. If Very talented hitter. Coach Baldwin, one of the best offensive coaches in the country. Got to think she's going to get there, but hasn't seen it so far. And this is the story that is Stephanie Schoonover as Kuma has re-entered to run at first base. And that ball has hit a bunch to left. Smith goes back. Off the top of the wall. Here comes Kuma. She's going to score. And cruising into second is Chambly with a two-out RBI double. Goodwin hits that to the left side. Is there room? Larson goes over, and she got it. And it's still snow coned out of there. But the Wildcats finally able to close it out for Georgia. Five runs, five hits, one error. They left eight on base for Kentucky. Seven runs, nine hits. They did not commit an error. And they left six on base. And it is Stephanie Schoonover that goes the distance.